Okay, so we're going to be having a look at the second circle theorem, which is just a couple of slides earlier on here. The second circle theorem is to do with the perpendicular bisector and chords. So I've got this diagram that I've got here. We have the centre of the circle and we have a chord of a given circle where we might know this coordinate and this one here. And the circle theorem says that the perpendicular bisector of any chord passes through the centre of the circle. So here is the chord. You can see that it is perpendicular, this, um, this perpendicular bisector, and it passes through the centre of the circle. I put the da these dashes here to show that it has actually split it into two equally sized pieces. And I guess what I could have added on is I could have said that it is perpendicular. So we've got these same kind of properties as we did for this first one. And namely that property is that this line and this line are perpendicular. And this one interestingly goes through the centre. Now what we'll see later on is that if you had two chords, so if I had another chord here and I did its perpendicular bisector, then they're both going to go through the centre. So you could find the equation of where those lines cross and it will tell you the centre of it. So why will this help? Well, the first thing we did in this chapter is to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector. So you can now see why this is going to be useful. If we had two chords and hence found two bisectors, just like I was drawing here, let's just quickly do that, then you could actually find out the point of intersection, which would be the centre of the circle. And that actually is something we look at a bit more later on in this chapter. So we're going to use this fact that the perpendicular bisector in a chord um, goes through the centre. So we've already done these for the tangents. Let's have a go at this example that we have. OK, so luckily they've drawn us a diagram here, so I don't need to do it. But it says the points P and Q lie on a circle with centre C as shown in the diagram. And what I see immediately when I look at these is that they're not a diameter, they're not a radius, they are a chord. So it makes me think of this second circle theorem. The point P has coordinates minus 8, minus 2. The point Q has coordinates 2, minus 6. M is the midpoint of the line segment PQ. The line L passes through the points M and C. So I guess by the fact of them telling us that this is M, well, we clearly know that M is the midpoint. So this line that we're talking about here is a perpendicular bisector. I know it is a bisector because it's the midpoint, and I know it's perpendicular because it is going through the center. So that's how I know that this is a perpendicular bisector. Find an equation for L. So the key thing that we know about this is that they're perpendicular to each other. So I'm going to start off by finding the gradient of PQ. OK, if I know the gradient of PQ, I can work out the gradient of CM because they're perpendicular. So PQ, we're going to do the change in Y. So that's going to be minus 6 minus minus 2 which becomes minus 6 plus 2, and the change, is, change in x is 2 minus minus 8, which becomes 2 plus 8. So that is minus 4 over 10, which is minus 2 fifths. So that must mean that the gradient of Cm or Mc, depending on which way we're looking at it, is going to be the negative reciprocal of that, which is 5, 2, so part A. Now, for the equation of this line, remember you only need two things. You need the gradient and you need a coordinate. Well, I have this coordinate and now I have the gradient. So I'm going to say that the equation of the line is going to just be um, for our coordinate m. Oh, we haven't have we worked out m yet. No, we haven't worked out m yet, so we don't actually have that. So I should not have ticked this. We're going to need to work out what the coordinate m is. Now it's the midpoint. So the midpoint will be the average of the x's, which is minus 8 plus 2 over 2. And then we've got the average of the y's, which is minus 2 minus 6 over 2. So the midpoint is what's that going to be? Minus 6 over 2, which is minus 3, and minus 8 over 2, which is minus 4. So now we've got the point it's going through, and we've got the gradient. OK, so this must mean, if I come up here, that the equation for L is just going to be y plus 4, that's by doing y minus this, equals m brackets x minus minus 3, x plus 3. Now it hasn't asked for this in any particular form, so I'm actually quite happy to leave it in this form. If this was in an exam, if they haven't asked for me to present it in a particular way, then I can just leave it in this particular way that I've got here. I'm kind of fussy, so I probably will make it look a bit neater, but you could leave it here and you'd still get full marks. 
So you get y plus 4 equals 5 over 2x plus 15 over 2. So y equals 5 over 2x, and then we've got 15 over 2 minus 4 plus 7 over 2. Okay, so there is our equation for the line. Okay, part B of the question says, given that the y coordinate of C, so we're talking about the y coordinate of this center is minus nine, show that the x coordinate is minus five, and then find an equation of the circle. Okay, I think I'm gonna need an extra page in here, so I'm just gonna add this page in. Let's go for part B of the question. Now, for part B, I. Well, we know the equation of this line. We know the equation of this line, and we know the y-coordinate of something that is on that line. So I could find out the x-coordinate. So I'm going to use y equals 5 over 2x plus 7 over 2. And I'm going to use the fact that I know that along that line, the y-coordinate is minus 9. And that's going to help me find out what x is. So I'm just going to sub it in. I get minus 9 equals 5 over 2x plus 7 over 2. I'm actually just going to be just multiply with my 2 to make it a bit easier. And then I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. And so x is equal to minus 25 over 5, which is indeed minus 5. So we now know that this x coordinate is, sorry, this uh, the circle's centre is minus 5, minus 9. We've done this. We've shown that the x coordinate is minus 5. Now they want us to find an equation of a circle. Now there's two things that you need. Hopefully you're telling me this. The things that you need is the centre which we have, and the radius, which we don't have. So we need to find out what the radius is. Now, on the diagram, you can see that the radius is either going to be this or this, but they're obviously the same length as each other. So we can either find out CP or CQ. I don't mind which one we do. I'm probably going to do CQ. I don't know why. It's just one I, I feel like doing. So this is now going to be for part two of the question. The radius is going to be CQ, which is going to be the change in the x coordinates squared. So it goes from minus 5 to minus 2, so that's going to be a 7 squared, and minus 9 to minus 6, the difference between those is 3. So it's going to be a 7 squared and a 3 squared. Let's double check I've done that right. 7 squared and 3 squared. So that's going to be root 49 plus 9, which is root. 58 and I'm not going to bother trying to simplify that. So the equation is just going to be x minus, well the centre is minus 5 minus 9 so it's actually going to be x plus 5 squared plus y plus 9 squared equals 58 and there's the equation of the circle. So I guess the way we kind of think about this is every time you need an equation for a line you need two things you need gradient and you need a point. And every time you're doing an equation of a circle, you need two things, you need center and you need a radius. It kind of helps you go through this. Okay, so um, this one's actually similar to the first half of this exercise to do with a tangent. And then I've got this question here, which is to do with the second part of the exercise, which is to do with the perpendicular bisector. Um, so you might like to have a go at both of these. I'm going to sort of zoom out a bit so you can see them both at the same time, hopefully. Um, so this top one is to do with the tangent and the bottom one is to do with the perpendicular bisector. So you can have a go at both of these if you pause the video and then I'm going to go through them in just a few minutes. OK, or in just a few seconds, really. Okay, so this first one here is similar to the first part of this exercise. So we have a circle that's got a centre C, which is 3, 5, and it goes to point P, which is 6, 9. We want to find an equation of the tangent of the circle at the point P, giving it in this particular form that we've got here. So I still like to draw a sketch, and it really doesn't even need to be sensible about where you put the points. So I've got C, which is 3, 5, and I've got P, which is 6, 9. We want to find the equation of the tangent to this circle. So we're definitely going to be doing some things using the fact that the equation of the tangent and the radius are perpendicular. So I'll begin by finding out the equation of, sorry, not the equation, but the gradient of the radius. So the change in y is 9 minus 5, and the change in x is 6 minus 3. So that becomes 4 over 3. 
This must mean that the gradient of the tangent is minus 3 over 4, which is the negative reciprocal. And we know for an equation of a line, we need two things. We need the gradient and we need a point. So the equation of the tangent is going to simply be y minus 9, which is the y1 from p, equals m brackets x minus 6, which is also from p. I'm going to multiply everything through by 4, so I get 4y minus 36 equals minus 3, x minus 6. So 4y minus 36 equals minus 3x plus 18. I'm going to get everything onto the left-hand side, so I get 3x plus 4y, and then I've got minus 36 minus 18, which is minus 54. And that is equal to 0. So I don't think there's anything else that we really need to do for that question. I guess we could plot some of the coordinates if we wanted to, um, but I'm pretty happy with just leaving it as this. Okay. Um, now let's have a go at this next question, which is going to be using the perpendicular bisector. So a circle passes through the points A and B, and the centre of the circle has x value minus 1. Determine the equation of the circle. OK, so again, I like to start off with a sketch just to think about what is going on. So we have A and B, and we've got a centre of the circle, which is going to be C. This is clearly a chord. And then we're going to have a perpendicular bisector, which is going through C, that has an x value of minus 1. We don't know the y value. So A is 0, 0, and B is 4, 2. Now, we're also going to add this point in here, which is m, because I think that's going to be helpful for when we do a perpendicular bisector. So I'm going to begin by thinking about the gradient of a, b. So the gradient of a, b is going to be 2 minus 0 divided by 4 minus 0, which is just a half. So the gradient of m, c is going to be minus 2. You can see my diagram is not accurately drawn here because the gradients don't make any sense. So it really was just to visualise what's going on. The numbers don't have to make sense. Um, OK, and I also need to work out what the coordinates of the midpoint is. So the coordinates of the midpoint are just the average of the x's and the average of the y's. So the midpoint is just going to be 2, 1. So now we have the, if we call this L, the equation of L is going to be y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. So we get y minus 1 equals minus 2x plus 4, or y equals minus 2x plus 5. Now we know that the x coordinate is minus 1, so y coordinate, because it's actually on this line that we've got here, we can sub it in, we would get minus 2 multiplied by minus 1 plus 5, so that becomes 2 plus 5, which is equal to 7. So now we know that the centre of the circle is 1, 7. Oh, minus 1, 7, sorry. All we need to do is then find out the radius. Now we can either find out this one, or we can find out this one here. Hopefully you're going to spot that the easiest one to do is CA, because A is the origin. So to find the radius, we can say that r is going to be equal to the square root of the change in x and the change in y. So the change in x is just a 1 squared, and the change in y is just 7, because it's just a 7 squared there, and that is the square root of 15. Hence, the circle equation, because we know the radius and we know the centre, is going to be x plus 1 squared plus y minus 7 squared equals Okay, just going to break down what happened there. If you don't want to listen to this bit and you're done, it's fine. You can go on to exercise 6e. But there were two things that we did. We needed the fact that they were perpendicular, and then we needed the fact that it was a bisector. Okay, then we obviously were told about one of the coordinates, so we had to find out the other coordinate. Then for a circle, you need two different things. Uh, for a circle, you need the center and you need the radius. So that's for the circle, and that is for the perpendicular bisector. Okay, if you think about these as like separate things and the information that you need, 
you're going to find it a lot easier. People usually get quite overwhelmed with the, amount, with the amount of information that there is in these questions. So try and keep your page as organized as possible and try and think, what do I need? How do I get it? Okay, good luck with exercise 6E.